All right, hosses, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk to you about topography. In other words, how to style your labels. And I'll show you guys a bunch of cool things you can do with them. Like if you have a bunch of text and you want to left align it, right align it, make it big, make it bold, italics. You can actually even have links like you would find on a web page inside your program. And then whenever the user clicks on one of those links, it opens up their default browser and takes them to that web page. A bunch of awesome stuff you can do. And on top of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys another awesome type of layout. And I don't even know the name of this, um, you know, kind of layout. I just call it Boxception. It's basically, and don't, <laughs> never call it Boxception or like try to look it up online. No one calls it that but me. But I call it that because it's essentially sticking boxes inside other boxes. And I love this because... What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating one horizontal box left and right and then each box we stick inside is a column and i'll show you guys an example of when this would be useful so look at this piece of software i'm working with right now J just a pie chart you see how we have a section on the left this little project section and then my main area in the middle and then this little area on the right well what we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of resembling this where we have one kind of big row and that's a horizontal box and each box we add to it is going to be a vertical box or a column so then in those columns we can put whatever we can put more boxes we can just stack things on top of each other it's going to be pretty cool but that's you know the overview of what we're going to be doing so i'll just make all my boxes first All right, so let me make that horizontal box first. And again, this is just gonna be the main row that we're gonna stick everything inside. So GTK box, give it a spacing of 20. And now let me set this to, homogenous and I'll set this equal to false. And by the way, homogenous, whenever this method is set to true, it means that all children get equal space. So depending on if you want everything inside to be equally spaced out or just to fit to, you know, pretty much adapt to the contents of it, it's either true or false. So whatever looks better for your layout, um, you know, that's how you can manage that. Now, another thing after this we're gonna do is once we have our H box, we're gonna start adding those columns. Now, if you have multiple columns, then you probably wanna call them like, column A, column B, column C, or one, two, three, but I am only gonna have two in this example, so I'm just gonna say left and right. So VBox, I'll uh, just say VBox left equals GTK box, and for my columns, I actually wanna change the orientation of this. So orientation equals vertical, actually, There we go, that's why it wasn't popping up. Vertical, and I'll give this spacing of 22. Not 22, 20 as well. All right, so there's my left in, actually might as well do this. Jeez, all right. So boom roasted, I'm gonna do the same thing for right. All right, so now this is my entire row and I have a column on the left and a column on the right. So now the only thing I have to do is actually organize everything. What can I say? Uh, pack the two columns. Just so it knows, I have three columns created and it's like, all right, what do you wanna do? You just wanna stick them all on there or do you wanna put some inside the other? What's going on here? And this is where I, Say that so pack start v box left true true zero and the same thing with v box right all right so there is our layout and again all we did is we created three invisible boxes and then we're saying hey we're actually going to stick this one and this one inside this one 
So now whenever we create our items, we just add them to either VBox left or VBox right, and everything is going to be freaking golden. It's going to be awesome. So just at first, I'm just going to create a default label, and I'm going to do this because I'm going to put all the source code on GitHub, and not only do I want to give you guys a reference of what just plain text looks like, but anytime you want to get a specific label, instead of having to be like, uh, have to look this up and or watch the tutorial again, just go to my GitHub page, copy it, and plop it in your program. So GTK label, and again, no styling whatsoever. I'll just write, this is a plain label. Now, I'll add things to my left column at first. So VBox left, pack start, label, true, true, zero. And let me, holy sweet raviolis. All right. Now, let me say, uh, Okay, I'll just say normal. Be a little bit better if I comment those, eh? All right, so we got our normal label looking good. And now let me show you how to make it left justified and right justified. Actually, let me write left aligned. So you can also align text left and right. You really never align text to the right that often. When do you ever see it? If anyone knows, let me know. A newspaper? Not even a newspaper. Just like, I don't know. Uh, maybe a flyer? Whatever. But this is how you do it. Label equals GTK label. And instead of just writing your text into the constructor, you can also set it this way. So set text and let's go ahead and add a couple lines and i'll just write like uh, this is left aligned text and anytime you want to add a new line or like kind of a break then you just write backslash n and that's the kind of universal symbol for hey this is pretty much resembles pressing enter on my keyboard and i'll say oh wow multiple lines so cool <laughs> Oh man, another quality program from <laughs> from the new Boston. All right, so we have a label, we set the text. All right, so that, that, and the justify is justification left. All right, looking good. Now, of course, you gotta pack it in. And look at that, I'll just copy this. So that's the benefit of naming your variables all the same thing. So this text is gonna be left aligned and I'll just copy this and make this right aligner real quick and I'll actually do it this way. So if I copy this and plop it right in there, I'll show you guys that you can either use the setter method or the constructor. All right, and of course I wanna align that to the right and let me add some more words. So it doesn't look identical is the first one. So la 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 da da. All right, that's good. So this is gonna appear just as normal. This is gonna be left aligned. That's gonna be right as line. And actually, we don't even need to. Um, we can just test this right now. So add H box to the main window, and let's make sure everything's working at first. All right, so check this out. So this is our plain label. We didn't do anything special to it. Now this text right here, this is left aligned and it might be a little bit hard to see. Actually, let me. I don't have enough content on there to really demonstrate it. All right. So now we can easier easily see that. All right. So this text is left aligned. This text is right aligned. Looking good, but you know, aligning text that isn't really that impressive at all so let's look at something a little bit more interesting and that's enough for the left column so in the right column i'll show you guys how to line wrap and this is something that annoys a lot of people so usually they're making a program and they're like pulling text from a database and they try to print it out you know um on their piece of software and it's just going off the screen it's not wrapping like you would think like an, in a normal browser you actually need to set the line wrap whenever you have a bunch of text so i'll just write label uh, gtk 
And let me just write like uh I my name is Bucky. I love him. And let me just paste this a bunch of times so you can actually see that we are going to wrap something. All right. So this is a lot of text and well first let me just display it on the screen and I'll show you guys um, the wrong way to do it. So if you just write like something like label, um, actually let's not even do anything. I'll show you guys how dumb this looks. So VBox right, true, true, boom roasted. All right. So we got a bunch of text in holy sweet moly. Look at this. All right, so our text is clearly not behaving like we would like it to. I mean, this column looks pretty good, but this column is going away off the screen. So unless you wanna make a piece of software that is like 8,000 miles wide, then what we need to do is we actually need to change one line of code or add one line of code. And that is for the label, we want to set the line wrap equal to true. So now when you run this, check it out. Oh, I don't want to do that either. All right. So now instead of just going off the screen, it actually wraps like we expect it to. So now the user can resize their window and it adjusts perfectly, a much better design. And actually, let me let me delete this because I don't have a bunch of mumbo jumbo text when I'm trying to teach the rest of these. That's right, I'm naming Bucky. I love him, looking good. All right. Now, another cool thing I want to show you guys is this. Instead of just wrapping lines, we can kind of go for that newspaper effect. So you know whenever you're reading a newspaper, the text isn't left aligned or right aligned. It's kind of um, justified in a way where it fills up the entire column in the sense that all of your columns are equal sizes. And it looks really neat. And the way that they do this is instead of just picking the exact number of words for each line, they actually add spaces between some words. So some words may have one space between, some words may have three spaces between, but it fills it all in automatically so you have nice equal columns. So I'll just write um, fill newspaper right here. And let me just copy this like three more times. All right, so in order to get the newspaper effect, what you do is you, of course, set the line wrap equal to true, because if you don't, then it's just going to plow off the screen. And the other thing you do is you set the justify, and let me just copy this. Now, instead of right or left, you actually set this equal to fill, just like that. So now, whenever you run this bad boy, check it out. You see that I can shrink it or stretch it and instead of having text that has spaces like this is right line and it has a big gap right here and this is left line and it has a big gap right here look what happens to this so it changes in this column or the text is always the same width and this is really good if you have a type of layout where you have like a magazine and you have text in this column and text in this column it makes it a lot easier to read for the user and the last thing that I'm going to show you guys is actually that markup that I was talking to you guys about. So markup is kind of like its own flavor of HTML in the sense that you can surround text with tags and it displays differently. For example, you can have small, big, bold, italics and I'll show you guys that right now. So let me just make a label. I'll just set this equal to a blank label at first and for the label I'm actually going to set markup all right so in here instead of just writing basic text I'm actually going to write a bunch of stuff so the first one is small and I'll just write like a small text so just like HTML in order to make a tag you write um, less than and then the keyword and then greater than and then at the end of it you write the same thing but you have that forward slash right there and now let me actually put each of these on a new line 
So, actually, stick this on the new line too. My look. Actually, that's not. What's the easiest way to do this? Probably if we just do it incredibly lazy. So we can have small, we can have big. And we can have, uh, what's another one? Anytime you want to make it bold, you just write the letter B. It's all right, I am bold text. And I'll write all of them because I know that a lot of you guys are probably just gonna. All right, I want one. There we go. Um, copy it from my GitHub. So anytime you want italics, italics is cool too. And right, and I right there. And now um, another cool thing you can do is you can actually add hyperlinks as well. So in your software, you can link to, what's well, a website you would always want to link to? Probably the newboston.com. So you would write your link like normal. And inside um, the A tags are what text is going to display to the user. And I'll just write learn cool stuff. I'll just write learn stuff. Now, of course, what website you want to link to, you add the href attribute. Now check this out. Usually your href attribute is you write the name or excuse me the URL in between these double quotes but the problem is the text is surrounded by double quotes so in order to escape those before any double quote inside you write a backslash before it and that says you know don't treat this as the end of the string treat it as a special character and you can also add an optional title to it Now a title, um, I'll just write like um, uh, hover text. And you guys are gonna see that there's gonna be a link and whenever you hover your mouse over it, this is what's gonna appear, the title right there. And let me also make sure that label set liner app equal to true so it doesn't pop off the screen and everything. Should be good to go. So let me run this. And we got an error, markup error. And that is because you can't make an italics with two different letters. So, all right, so italics are I, and then of course you have to close it with the same tag. And now check it out, it looks a little bit better. So again, this is small, this is big, this is bold. And I forgot to add a new line, but you get the point. And check this out. This is what I was talking about with the title. Actually, let me add a new line. It's bugging me. All right. So this is what I was talking about with the hover. So this is a link, of course. And whenever you hover it, that text appears over. It's kind of like a tool tip. And if you were to click this, then the user's default browser opens and it takes them to that page. So pretty sweet. That is your quick little tutorial on, you know, topography, labels, styling, whatever you want to call it. And again, I'm going to put all this on my GitHub page. So anytime you want to, you know, change the styling of your text, you don't have to watch this video again. Just go copy whatever little chunk you need, plop it in there, and you guys are golden. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.